Um, I, I had seen Breathless, and that was really the sort of singular um, encounter with Gene Seberg that I had before I read the script and met Benedict and um, talked about how to put this thing together. I think um, there's something in, in watching more of her films, um, her first few, few performances are like some of my absolute favorite and they were delivered in a time where, it, um, especially like in a commercial sense, things were really packaged and delivered in a much different way. People really stood and performed things in a really kind of what felt like prepared and skillful you know, way. And um, she was really kind of a, a, a sprawling energy. And I love her. I mean, like, I'm, I'm a huge fan. And, um, yeah, so I think in figuring out more about this particular slice of her life, um, kind of like really bowled over by the idea that this is like a new story mm -hmm. um, and uh, became kind of like immediately protective of her because she does have something really available. She's incredibly available. And, um, <clears throat> you know, she went through a lot, which the movie, you know, does its best to showcase. And um, by the end, those performances are, are uh, really beautiful, but in such a different way because she is receded and she's just sort of like a few inches behind her face. And um, in the beginning, she was protruding. Like she was, f f she was just like coming out of herself in this way that was like so undeniable. And um, so yeah, initially I kind of, I had this image-based idea of her and I had this gestural kind of free, uh, 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 like sort of unwranglable cat uh, and we tried to do that for sure, but that was my initial, it was, it was no deeper than that. And so it was interesting to get to know her through this experience. I, there was one day that I, my phone died and I was driving my friend's car cause mine was in the shop and I didn't have a GPS system and I had no way to, like I literally like flagged down a police officer and was like crying. I was like, there's a set and there's like somewhere around here and I need to, I'm screwed. I'm, he's going to be so mad at me. And like. That is the feeling that you need to have going to work yes. is like, and I get that from her. I, you know, it's also kind of like, um, anytime there was a, anytime there was a cat running across set, anytime there was something strange that happened, it does, it felt spooky, ghosty. Yeah. Like just felt, pre it felt pregnant, felt like full of something that was sort of uh, like, yeah, we had this great responsibility and, and um, maybe that's just like in our heads and we're making it up, but like it, there was shit going down that made no sense. And really? I was like, there she is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like spooky? Yeah, there were just moments that we were like, you felt her, yeah. yeah. I think her, her, her voice changes a lot. That was weird. Um, there's no way to really like pin it down because really environmentally she's shifting a lot. There's like, there, there are like, you know, we all have a sort of default setting and then different versions of that. But hers were like pretty, um, there was a through line, but hers were like pretty distinct. Um, and because this is like a sort of boiled down version of this person, you like take an image and something kind of more surface and then start deconstructing it and like watching it become a real thing that like breathes and is fallible and is vulnerable and um, so yeah I think like the way like I was saying earlier like just my my way in was seeing her just later in her life like it was just, just like there was no way to get very close to her other than through her work mm -hmm. um, yeah and I think tonally we're really different I think she enters a room and takes up space in a, in a, in a vastly different way than I do and um, I wanted that sort of buoyancy and like lively kind of thing that she had since she was a little kid that I've only like begun to be able to like taste parts of as I've like as I'm approaching 30 you know what I mean like that she was uh I don't know I think like the 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 screen test the I mean um few performances like I would say like Breathless to Lilith to I don't speak French, so it's hard for me to remember this title, but there's there's a sort of documentary style. Les Autres Solitudes Thank of you. Philippe Grove. <laughs> so like, he says it so nicely, too. Yeah. <laughs> I only pretend to speak French. <laughs> um, but uh, th th there's some footage that is strung together in a really sort of transient way that is so devastating and really, uh, like, you're not quite sure what story is being told other than the story of this sort of, like, isolated and kind of like secluded by choice um, 
receding human and it was yeah. like that. So yeah, I would say um, to go from that to that, like the, what was the, the limited resources that were available um, just were like so completely different, so polarized. And uh, she was young when she died. She was 40 years old. Like, mm. so, the, you know, the time in between wasn't that long. Yeah. So uh, even though our movie's only three years or two, you know, whatever, like three years or so, um, I just wanted to make sure that from 15 to 40, just because we don't have much of an opportunity, it's not a biopic, I still wanted to feel that crashing. <laughs> he would like walk onto set and be like, <laughs> and sort of wipe his hair away from his face, and I was like, "You're the you're there." And honestly, I'm breathing it. And like I can feel it. I'm like, "Okay, let's go." I know you don't even have to say anything. Like, wow. Yeah. I think we both have absolutely shared this sort of like fierce commitment to to um, not trying to overtly control people's, especially public's perception of you, but just that you're in that just that you're inside of it. Mm -hmm. That somehow like you can't necessarily like. Maybe you don't agree with someone's impression of you, but that's their impression of you. As long as you can stand, as long as you can vouch for yourself and like at the end of most experiences say, I mean, look, that was like me, so whatever like comes of it is fine. Um, no, but the, the really frustrating and, and kind of gutting thing is when you feel like, you know, stolen from. And that is like, and then to have like, like he was saying really well earlier, that this platform that you're usually allowed to utilize in a way that reveals you, even if you're shy or, or like, you know, because Jean was not. She was yeah. like, we're different, totally fine, but like we still, we're actresses that want to be looked at because you have things and you want to share them and, and you want all of it back. And so when that is stolen and distorted and used against you. I've tasted that in like the most superficial way compared to her. Um, but I, that was one thing that I was like, girl, I got you. I know, I know that feeling, it's terrible. Yeah. And um, uh, it's great, now, it's easier now because we have more control over how we're um, sort of communicating. Is we it? Had, yeah, I mean, absolutely. People can go online and say whatever they want. And, she didn't have that. I mean, if you, I know it's like a kind of an, uh, like a like a like a sort of. Okay, I sound like super pretentious, but like a reductive <laughs> way of thinking about it. It's like, well, we have Instagram and we have social media, but it's like seriously different. Mm -hmm. She was so subject to whoever was interviewing her. She was she, like, you know, the one interview that we have in the movie, the agent sitting in the room, Sorry. like saying, like Jean, uh, we don't have as much as uh, of that, mm -hmm. which is, you know. Unless you want it, you know what I mean? It's just that, like now we have it in our hands a little bit more. Well, I'm not ready to like write my memoir. <laughs> um, uh, no, I feel like they are small and mine and definitely not like s story worthy yet. But no, I, I have so many, like I'm, I've been like, Crazy, crazy lucky since I was like nine years old to have the, the most fulfilling and inspiring and, and um, just consistently stimulating um, experiences through art and weird things. Um, I can't really pick it. There's not like one moment where I look back and go like, that was it. Thank God, because like that would be sad. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. Um, so. Not fun answer, but there you go. There is something about kind of proving yourself in a room, not only to the people that you're gonna be working with, but also to yourself, mm -hmm. because it's a huge scary thing saying before you know you can do something that you can do it. And you're also telling a whole lot, load of people that really love this thing and have put a lot of time and money and effort and love into something. And so to be like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And you're like, how do you know? You've never done it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's something about it that is uh, like, you know, you can start, the few days leading up to the start of production is like less nauseating at times. I mean, like this is lame. I like if anyone were to be like, "How was she? Was she cool?" It's like, dude, she was really nice. That's like the, my favorite people are like, "You're yeah, that," um, and then that usually will inform like everything you do, like in your art and your politics and all that. And there's a really awesome trickle down effect of being really nice. <laughs> like you get a lot back. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys!
Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hey! hey.